Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking all about scales. And so I have my group members, Emily Hamelwright and Ranger Starts. And we're just going to give you a little bit of a review about the different types of scales and their functions. So I'm going to begin with an overview of scales. So who has scales exactly? Of course, we know fish and reptiles have scales all over their body, but birds actually have scales on their legs that are covered in keratin. And keratin is actually the stuff that we have in our hair and nails that help them grow. Mammals, of course, we're not used to mammals having scales, but there are a couple that do. Um, animals like the musky rat kangaroo and the scaly tailed squirrels have scales as well. And then lastly, arthropods, which are like butterflies and moths, have scales that cover their wings that help give them their beautiful color. So what is a scale? A scale is basically just a rigid plate that grows on top of an animal's skin and have different functions based on the environment they live in. Some of those functions may be protection, easy movement, and hydration so the animals don't get dehydrated. Next, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth specifically about the types of scales that fish may have. So starting with the morphology of fish scales, it's basically just plates of dermal bone that sit in between the dermis and the epidermis in most fish. And the epidermis and dermis is basically just the first two layers of what would be the fish skin if they had any. Um, the function of these scales ranges from resisting strong water currents, protection from enemies, and it also helps them be more flexible, which allows for easy movement and quick, sharp turns in the water. Next, we have the four main types of fish scales. So first, we have the placoid scale, and those are found in sharks and rays. Those are also made of a flattened base that have a spine protruding towards the rear end of the fish. These scales are often called denticles because they're made of dentin and enamel, which is also similar to what our teeth are made of. Next, we have ganoid scales, which are flat and don't usually overlap very much on the body of the fish, and those are found on things like gars and paddlefishes. And then our last two types of scales are the cycloid and tenoid scales that are found usually in the majority of bony fishes. These types of scales usually overlap like shingles on a roof, which allows the fish to be more flexible and have better movements. These scales also happen to grow rings like trees do determining age of the fish. So next, we're gonna go over a few examples of fish scales. So on the left-hand side, we have the cycloid scales of the common carp. So there you can see how they lay fairly flat and overlap, like I said, how shingles do on a roof. And then in the middle, we have the scales of a great white shark, which I included because not very many people know that great white sharks actually do have scales. And then lastly, we have the tenoid scales of the convict keeklid, which I just thought looked very interesting. And you can see the rings that dignify the age of the fish also, which I thought was really cool. And then I'm going to go ahead and pass it to Emily so she can talk to you about reptiles. So beginning with snakes. In the wild, their scales have several uses, first of which is similar to a fish, which is a coat of armor around the snake which adds that layer of protection. A fish is able to lose one scale, but a snake cannot. This is because a snake's scale is a continuous folded skin. Therefore, if a snake damaged a scale, it is the same as a human getting cut or having damage to their skin. So snake scales are used for camouflage and protection. With camouflage, this wide depends on the environment of the snake, but a snake scale comes in a wide array of different colors from dull brown all the way up to bright green. For protection, snake scales are hardened and therefore when in conflict, it is a great asset for any snake, which makes snake hard to penetrate. Now looking at the two pictures, on the left, there's a snake that is very camouflaged in with its ground. It is hard to see the snake, which helps when looking out for predators as well as trying to get their prey. They have complete coverage with their area and their surroundings, and that ensures that they are protected. 
And on the right, it shows a close-up picture of snake scales. This just shows the thick coat of armor and protection that the scales give. Moving on to lizards. Lizard scales are multifunctional with camouflage, defense, and movement. Scales are able to protect them from everyday wear and tear. Scales are mostly made of keratin, and this substance is both tough and waterproof, which ensures that lizards do not dry out. Their multifunctional use is first, their camouflage. They provide camouflage with their different colors in their environment and able to be blended in and safe. Second, defense. Lizards keep in moisture as well as act as a defense against predators by using their scales. The third is movement, which scales are used in order to have the animals move. Now, this shows four different pictures of lizard scales. On the first left corner, it shows how lizards are blending in using their scales as camouflage. It is very hard to be able to see the lizard that is on the tree. And now on the right side of the top, you can see the beautiful colors that the scales can have, which is very different from the camouflage color to the left. And on the bottom too, it shows two different breeds of lizards. One is a bearded dragon on the left, and it shows the different types of scales, as well as scales that are used for protection as the pointed scales in the bearded dragon can be used as protection from predators. Now on to scale evolution. Evolution is how different species have came to be the type of species they are with different distinguishing features. So millions of years ago, snakes evolved from lizards. After the evolution of jaw, giant reptiles called Archnosaurus put them to good use, and while dominating the planet 250 million years ago, these ruling reptiles were the common ancestors of dinosaurs, as well as two living groups, the birds and crocodiles. Birds are the only modern dinosaurs with feathers, while crocodiles in their can have scales, which implies the evolutionary connection. Now this shows an evolutionary tree that have the crocodiles and the birds um, evolving away from each other from a common ancestor. Reptiles evolved from amphibians of the Carboniferous period, which depended on water bodies for laying eggs and development of larval stage and could not exploit arid habitats far away from water bodies. Then bodies developed a covering of epidermal scales in order to prevent loss of body moisture and the skin glands were then lost in evolution. Lastly, this shows the reptile family tree, which all have scales along in different ways, but it shows how fish first came from vertebrates and then went to tetrapods, amnioids, diapsins, lipidosaurs, to squamates, which have the snake and lizard, which are most closely related. If you've ever touched a fish, you might remember that they feel a little slimy. That sliminess is what protects fish from bacteria and viruses, while for snakes, on the other hand, regularly shed their skin to remove parasites that have attached to them. Uh, as you can see in the video, uh, the fish, as I moved a, uh, in the sunlight, it shines. This is a type of camouflage the scales provide for uh, fish. This shininess protects fish from some aerial attack predators or some aerial predators by blending in with the shininess of the water. While snakes, on the other hand, range in all kinds of coloring to suit their environment. As you can see in the picture, this uh, snake is accustomed to hiding in darker brown areas like dead leaves or trees. And uh, some snakes uh, have very bright colors. Um, instinctively not to blend in but to be very noticeable uh, this is so they can or uh, so this is a purpose for so that they notify predators that they are poisonous so they will prevent them from getting eaten there are different types of scales for both snakes and fish 
Snakes, as you can see on the left, have both smooth and keeled scales. The picture of the snake on the bottom has smooth, sca uh, smooth scales because it's shinier, while keeled snail or snake scales have duller coloring. Now the picture of the fish scales on the bottom is called synoid. Uh, each different scale has different features uh, that allow it to be better suited for the environment like Ashley has already have talked about. Now it's time to introduce Bruce. So this is Bruce. I can see he's covered in scales head to toe. And uh, unlike uh, snakes, fish are not covered all the way. Fish are missing scales on their fins, and but both of them use these scales to prevent heat from escaping their body because they are ectotherms, meaning they need as much heat to keep warm as possible. And uh, so what this scale is to do is it act like an insulation. Um, and as well as it allows them to act as camouflage. As you can see, Bruce here is probably more accustomed to hiding in dark areas or on trees similar to that. And he's uh, these scales are also used to prevent abrasions. Uh, so if he's climbing up those trees, he's good at hiding. He'll be able to prevent uh, sticks and twigs poking them and also from getting cut through the bark or something like that. So as well as um, these scales are used for protection just in case something species wants to bite them or attack them. These scales help for like armor. Same with fish. It's like another fish tries to bite them. It'll act like armor and prevent uh, significant damage if possible.